college football is back and we're back on the big mountain where we bring you a fresh take on college football betting focused on the big 10 and the mountain west hey it's great to see you again and if you're new here welcome to the mountain my name is jy this is my good friend steve and we are going to do our first power rankings of the season for college football uh this is right before week five opens up uh, so we're get, we're going to take uh, Big Ten teams, Mountain West teams, and some of the Pac-12 teams. I'll let you tell them which ones and yeah. why. Yeah. Um, and we're going to rank them. So we've got 32 teams here. We're going to start at the bottom, work our way up. So what do we got here, Steve? So like JY, JY said, we're, gonna, we're mixing up the Big Ten teams, the Mountain West teams. So we're going to throw in the Pac-12 teams that all the teams that are going to be going to, that we know are going to the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. And we're also throwing Oregon State and Washington State in there because we have a good idea. We think that they're either going to be going to the Mountain West, joining with the Mountain West, merging with the Mountain West, yeah. something to that extent. We're adopting them. Yes, they're adopting. We've actually been fought. So if you are new, we've did, we've been doing a ton of expansion types of uh, videos. Uh, if you're interested in that, check out our channel. We have a lot of uh, information on the Pac-12 and, and the Beavs and the Cougs in particular. And we're going to continue that. We're really monitoring this. Um, so anyway, we kind of have taken on the, the Beavers and the Cougars yeah. out of just We've uh, adopted all of that. you guys. We've you're, adopted you're them. officially ours now. Love it. I love them. Yeah. So anyway. Um, so to, to, to tease a little bit. Yeah. Um, so our, so our, our top five, our top three are going to include... Um, Michigan, Penn State, and Washington. That's in any order. So if you want to see who ends up number one, but our top three teams we have are Michigan, Penn State, and Washington. So you said Washington. Yes. Our top, one of our top three teams. One of our top three That's teams. That's higher Washington. than any, but anything I've seen. Penn State right We're crazy. Up there. We're crazy boys. And Michigan. Everybody's got Michigan up there. So we've got Michigan and two surprises as our top three teams. I love it. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. We have another surprise. Okay. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. We have at least one Mountain West team. In the top ten. Oh, all right. So for the Mountain West viewers, don't be like, oh, they're gonna, uh, we're gonna be in the bottom half. We've got at least one in the top ten. And for the Poke fans and for uh, the Boise fans, maybe you're gonna be a little surprised as to where you end up as well. So watch through the end. We're gonna go through these fairly quickly. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to do this. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm, I'm excited to see how it comes out because I think there's I have three Mountain West teams in mind that could all be in that in that top ten. So I think honestly, if we do this in a few more weeks, if a few teams keep winning, yeah, Air Force, Boise, Wyoming, yeah, they may be, be uh, maybe more than one in yeah. the top ten. Yeah. So anyway, okay. let's get to it. All right, okay, so we're gonna start from the bottom, which so 32 teams. Um, so our bottom group here, no surprises. Um, you know, there, there's, a, there's a group of Mountain West teams that have just been struggling. There's a group of Big Ten teams. You know, Minnesota, um, well, starting at the bottom, you know, you said from the beginning, Nevada, Hawaii, um, New Mexico, Utah State, those would be some Mountain West teams that would struggle. Yeah. Uh, and we've also been with, you know, Michigan State. Purdue, Indiana, Northwestern, Nebraska, and many as other teams that are struggling. We do have Colorado State in that bottom group. They mm -hmm. played really good against Colorado. They're, 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 I, I could see them maybe getting up out of that bottom group. Yeah, well, once you get into those upper 20s, you know, you're know you getting into your mid-range of all of these teams. Yep. Uh, but I agree with you. I think of all these teams we have uh, from 21 to 32, uh, Colorado maybe has the, the greatest um, – hope or greatest chance of, of moving up out of that bottom tier, if you will. Yeah. Um, I will point out that New Mexico um, is one of our largest uh, spreads between the two of us. So yeah. the way we did this, Steve ranked all of these teams, uh, and then I ranked all of these teams, and then we just combined the scores. We yeah. averaged the scores between him and me. Um, and you were a little higher on the Lobos than I was. Uh, I ranked the Lobos the, as the worst team in the Mountain West. Um but, you know, we're talking about 30, 31, 32. So yes. uh, I'm not sure why I'm wasting much time on that. <laughs> Nothing against our Lobos fans. I know we've got some Lobos fans out there. Uh, but, yeah, let, uh, you know, let, let's talk about who could move up. And I agree with you. I think Colorado State probably of all these teams has the the best chance to move up next time we do this. Totally agree. So what, so the next group is real interesting. Why don't you take us through the next group of teams in these rankings? So the next group, so we're going to do the next third. This is our rankings from 11 through 20. Now, we do have a tie here at, at 19 with uh, the Illini and the Rebels. 
Uh, the Rebels as a team, you know, you see we, we have them up into that second tier here. Mm-hmm. Been very impressive. I could see them continuing to chug yes. their way uh, up into maybe the top half here before too long if they keep doing well. Uh, you see San Diego State we have at 18. Probably if we did a preseason ranking, they're probably higher than, than 18, I, I would suspect. So, um, and, and San Diego State, again, uh, is the largest spread that we had between two schools. I was a little higher on them than, than what you were. Um, so definitely probably if, if we had to pick one team that uh, we disagreed on in terms of rankings, it would be the Aztecs here, and mm-hmm. I totally get that. Kind of not 100% sure where they're at. They've had a very hard schedule to start the season, and yeah. so it's like, where are they yeah, in the Mountain West? That's what makes it hard. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but here you got Wyoming. You know, we teased Wyoming right here at the midway mark at, at 16. Then you get into some of those kind of upper mid-tier uh, schools in the in the Big Ten. You got your Maryland, your Iowa, uh, your, and then we've got UCLA. So here's one of our, our you know, additional um, going to be new Pac-10 schools. Um and or I'm sorry, Big Ten schools. Big what did 10. I say? Pac Ten. Yeah, I'm all confused with all the Pac Twos yeah, and all that two, stuff. Pac Twelve, Pac Big everything. Ten yeah. schools. Uh, and you're going to see we're going to get into a lot more of these Pac schools as we get into the top ten. But here we're cracking one with UCLA. And then just outside of the top ten, we've got the Broncos and the Falcons. Um, I think next time we see this, you're going to see one of these schools breaking into the top ten, yes. and one of these schools probably in the lower half of of this ranking so which one goes up and which one goes down i'm not really sure yet i would say if i was a betting guy which we are because that's what we do around here uh, i would say air force probably is on the better trajectory right now but i I do not want to you know right at this point bet against boise they still have a very strong team genty's phenomenal so if he can if they can ride him they'll be fine but um so that's our mid-tier I think, and I do think in that group, uh, UNLV is a team that that could have a chance to move up in that group. Yep. Maybe pass one of those other uh, Mountain West teams. Maybe pass some um, uh, big, a few Big Ten teams. Mm-hmm. The one team that has the most volatility here, I see, is Maryland. Yeah. Okay. I've said in our preview show and all season that I expected Maryland to get to five and zero and then be the <clears> worst five and zero team in <throat> the entire country. So they have a big game against Ohio State coming up mm-hmm. um, next week. Okay, so I could see them. I mean, if they were to upset Ohio State or play them really close, like they oh did a few years ago, goodness, Steve, you're talking crazy. Uh, they could move up into the into our top group, or it, if they were to lose a couple games, mm-hmm. take a tumble over the next couple weeks, I could see them dropping into that bottom third group. So I think they right. have a lot of volatility. Right. But the one team I'm really interested in there, UNLV. Yep. Um, Maeva, the freshman quarterback. Yep. I, I, I think they have a lot of room to grow this year. I really mm-hmm. do. Uh, they absolutely could be on the trajectory for the top half of this of this ranking here in the, in the near future. I totally agree with you. Well, let's get to our top 10, Steve. Yes. And I'm, I'm going to let you have it. Okay. Well, so why don't we do this? So okay. we're in the top 10. We're going to show the top 10 here. I actually want you to give the number 10 team. The number 10 team. And then I'll take it from there. Okay. So we cracked... Uh, Fresno State cracked into the top 10 of all of this, which is which is phenomenal. They have had a fantastic start to the season. Oddly enough, we both ranked them as the 10th team. Yes. So, obviously, it averages to 10. Um, so, we both had them in the top 10. It's not like one of us had them higher and one of us had them lower. We, we both agree that they're a top 10 team. So, the dogs crack our top 10. Uh, and, quite frankly, depending on how their season goes, they could move up into this poll as well. Yeah. Um, but, hey... Awesome for a Mountain West team here to, to be in this top 10 when we're talking uh, the higher end of the Pac-12 for the most part and all of the Big Ten schools. Um, way to go, dogs. Uh, we're rooting for you. Yeah. We love some of the upsets that you've had for the Mountain West. Um, and we'll see where you go from here. Yeah, I, I've been on them all season. And as I've said in like after the last couple of weeks, I think that they've put together so far. There's a lot of really big Mountain West teams yep. coming up. Yeah, uh, a lot of mountain, good, really big Mountain West games coming up yep. against good teams. But so far, I think they've put together the best resume of any Group of Five team in the country. Mm-hmm. Um, and they make a strong case. They really do. Yeah. Now let's see if they can continue that going. Both of us thought strongly they should be in that top ten. They mm-hmm. deserve it. The the wins they've gotten on the road. Um, they had a, a road Big Ten win, a road Pac-12 win. Correct. So, um, and yeah, well, and if you look at our 10, 11, 12, they're all Mountain West teams, yep, right? So, so we've got yep. Fresno, we've got Boise, and we've got Air Force right there as 10, 11, 12. So they're all right on that cusp. Again, I, I think that's going to break, they're not all going to stay there. 
Uh, but hey, that, that's that's neat to see. I think um, you know for the most part we were we were in agreement on on all three of those. Uh, so let's keep moving with our top ten. What else yeah. we got? So moving up, the next team we have Wisconsin. I was high on them at the beginning of the year. Mm -hmm. They did have that disappointing loss at Washington State. However, as the season has gone on, it looks less and less disappointing. Right. Washington State is a really good team. Yep. It was on the road in Pullman, Washington. Um, you know, Wisconsin, they still they still don't have maybe their offense totally together. They brought in a new offensive coordinator mm -hmm. that runs that he runs an, an air raid that has a major running component to it. Mm -hmm. Continued to play strong defense. Um, they've ran the ball well in most games, um, so we have them in there ninth, and, and they have an opportunity. They, I mean, they could easily, um, you know, go go ten and two, go eleven and one, be the be the the Big Ten West champion, yeah. play in that in that conference championship yeah. game, or you know, because they struggle to score points, they could lose three or four close games. Yeah, so they could go either way. Yeah. Um, and then moving up to the next team, Oregon State, the Beavers. They've had a great – I think they've had a really solid season so far. Totally. Um, you know, they lost to Washington State. That's one of their big rivals. Yep. Um, both, I thought, really good teams. And I'm glad they came out right next to each other. Both of us had them the same seventh and right. eighth. Right. Because they deserve – they both deserve it. Totally agree with you. Washington State gets the upper hand. They got the win. Yep. And so they're at seven. Great season for them. Um, their quarterback, I think it's, it's Cam Ward, I think is his name. Mm. Is He's having a Heisman Trophy contending season. Fantastic. Um, well, and, and if, it's funny because if we would have done this the week prior, I still would have had Washington State ahead of Oregon State. Okay. I actually picked them in the last yeah, video. You did. They were pick. getting points, but I also liked them in the win straight up, to which yeah. they did. Um, so I, I would have had them above Oregon State here even a, a week prior, but it made it much more easier yes. when they just played, so we knew who yes, was the did. better team. And b both good teams having a good season, yeah, for sure. Um, well, well deserving. So uh, USC is our next team. We we have them as a, a tie for fifth with Oregon. Um, USC great offense. They have the the reigning Heisman Trophy winner Caleb Williams at quarterback. Fantastic offense. Got playmakers all over the field. I still think it goes back to what we talked about at the very beginning of the season. What keeps them from being maybe a college football playoff team this year mm -hmm. is their defense is still just average to below average, mm -hmm. especially for a Power 5 team that wants to contend for a playoff position. Um, that's the problem that I have with USC. Yeah. Or, well, yeah, go ahead. And I was going to say, in order, they're, they're tied there. Um, I actually had I had Oregon. We had them flip flopped. I had right. Oregon just above USC, mm -hmm. mostly because I think Oregon's offense is almost as good as USC. Bo Nix is having a great season, mm -hmm. really good team, really good offense, and I and I do think Oregon's defense is just they're they're solid. They're yeah. they're they're not they're they're not an elite defense, but they're also not a liability. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about those two teams? Well, playing? the only thing I was going to say there is actually I could see potentially as the season goes on. Washington State and Oregon State moving ahead of both of those teams. They both have great offenses, but I'll tell you what, every season the Ducks have one or two flub <laughs> yeah, ups and they just crap the bed. Yeah. And, you know, I think USC's in for a, a crapping of the bed this year, too. You know, when you ride those high offenses, and everybody has a, an off game. Yeah. And when you can't have the defense to get you through, yep. you, you, you lose a game. You shouldn't be losing on paper. Yeah. And um, I just think Washington State and Oregon State is a m are more well-rounded. They don't Absolutely. have the high and the low, yes. but just well-rounded teams. So I know we have them ranked below. Wouldn't be at all surprised to see at least one, if not both of them, above Oregon and USC by the end of the season. Great points. I, I can definitely see that. It definitely, especially with Washington State, since they have that yeah. win. Yep. Um, and, and they have that win over Oregon State. They have that win over Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they have the... The Apple Cup coming up later in yes. the season with Washington. That's yep. going to be a huge game. So, yep. all right. So, moving forward from Oregon, um, Ohio State. We've got Ohio State as, at, at four, which it's funny because we both ranked them at three. Yes. But <laughs> they averaged out to four. Yes. <laughs> um, Ohio State, I mean, they're a great team. On, on paper, um, they're they're definitely a top four team, college, fo college football playoff team. Um, they, their offense started a little slow mm -hmm. uh, until they got their quarterback situation sorted out. They have a they have a they have a good they actually have a really good defense. Their defense yeah. has has been better than I expected. They have a good D line. They mm -hmm. have a good secondary. Uh, their offensive line has been a little bit of a question mark. They had that big road win uh, at Notre Dame yeah. where they scored. Uh, you know they were trailing, but they went down. Kyle McCord put down a put a, put together a great drive to go and win the game. Now. 
something that you and I talked about, the last two plays for Notre Dame, ten, only 10 men on the field, so they gave Ohio State, from the one-yard line, two plays with only 10 men on the field. It took them two plays to score. I just don't understand. Yeah, so maybe we'd be looking at this totally different yeah. if Notre Dame actually had yeah. uh, 11 guys on the field for both of those plays. Yeah. I don't know. But, you know, on paper, so Ohio State's done what they need to do. On paper, they're a great team. It makes sense that they're right there for So, So let me just say, you mentioned we both had them at three. And our viewers say, will say, how in the world does that average out to four? Yeah. Well, in, in reality, we actually have our number four and our number three at the same average as three. Yeah. yeah. So both Penn State, in which we're going to get to next, and Ohio State, both average to three. Our tiebreakers were done via who, if, if a team had a higher ranking than the rest. So right. one of us had Penn State as a two. Yeah. Uh, the other as a four. And we both had Ohio State as a three. Yeah. So we give Penn State that nod. You see the two ties that we did have. It's because there wasn't a – I couldn't even use a tiebreaker because it was five, six, and six, five. Mm -hmm. But this one did have a tiebreaker. Yeah. So that's why Penn State gets the, the nod. Technically a tie – but we gave the tie break to Penn State, and with that, Penn State number three. Yeah, and that's why that's why I keep Jy around. He's the math guy. <laughs> keep me straight <laughs> on that because I couldn't figure it out. So, all right, Penn State. Uh, you know, everybody knows I'm a Penn State fan. I was at the whiteout. They had a they had a great victory, 31 nothing, just a, a, a curb stomping of Iowa in the whiteout. Um, you know, Iowa is the is. Iowa's the best team that they've played so far. They haven't had a, a terribly hard schedule. Um, you know their their offense really hasn't totally come to life. They yeah. they ran I think ninety three plays this last week. It was just kind of a dink and dunk offense, whatever. But their defense is elite. Mm -hmm. They're they're ranked in the top five in both um, passing defense and rushing defense. Uh, they're getting to the quarterback. They they aren't quite getting those sack numbers that you'd love to see that look great, you know, on the right. on the Twitter feed. Right, right. But what they're doing is they're pressuring quarterbacks, and if they're either getting the sack or they're hitting the quarterback and causing those those turnovers, those interceptions. Penn State is the only team in FBS football to not have a turnover this year. Mm -hmm. They have not turned the ball over, so they're causing turnovers. Their defense is creating havoc, and then their offense has been conservative but has protected the ball and it's yeah. been a winning formula um and, it, and it's put them up there in our in our top three teams top three yep yeah. number three on the on the list here Do you have any so, comment on penn state uh the only comment i'll have is i'm and i've said this to you before i'm very very disappointed in their non-conference schedule yeah it doesn't get much more cake than that for yeah. for a team that wants to be an elite team a top three team mm -hmm. You got to do better than Delaware, and is it UConn? UMass, UMass. UMass. I'm sorry, UMass, and whoever the heck else they play. Okay, they played West Virginia. Eh, that's okay. But I, I, I just struggle with, and that's a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. You don't have to counter me whatsoever. But if you're going to be a top three, you got Texas and Alabama playing in in week one for Pete's sake. Yeah. Like, what are we doing here, at Penn State? So I will say something here. Um, and and I mean, as a as a, I'm a Penn State season ticket holder, I'd love to see some. I really enjoyed. Yeah. Auburn coming to play there a couple years ago, and, and I love the great out-of-conference schedule. Now, what I will say, I agree with your sentiment on on principle. Mm. However, if you do look at those elite teams the last few years, Georgia, and you look at uh, Michigan, Michigan, second year in a row with a butter-soft out-of-conference schedule. That's true, and Georgia does the same thing. Yes, yeah. and so James Franklin came from the SEC. Yeah. Okay. He's seen what the SEC is playing, like directional schools. And the yeah. SEC even goes further. Their last game of the year, many of the teams, they play their softest opponent right. the okay. last game of the year. Touché. So I, I see what you're saying, and, and I would love to see Penn State play uh, a more robust out of conference uh, schedule. I, I'm not asking for a top ten team. I am asking for a team that might get a win this year. <laughs> totally understand it. So anyway, but well, that's what those elite teams do is they yeah. they pack the cupcakes into the schedule. Yeah. So that's where we're at. So moving forward, Michigan number two. Um, all right. So you know this is a team where they made the they made they won the Big Ten two years in a row. They smashed Penn State last year. They've they've destroyed Ohio State physically, mm -hmm. manhandled Ohio State two years in a row. Mm -hmm. On paper, they have pretty much the same team as last year. Right, you would expect them to be better than even better than last year. Right, they haven't quite lived up to expectations. Um, their their coach was suspended, but they've done what they they needed to do. Right, I actually had them as my number four team. You had them as your number one team. I was blown away that you had them. At yeah, number four. Quite frankly, yes, yeah. I I do have them as my number number one. I just yeah. think they are the the best team in our in our ranking right now 
until they prove that they're not, quite frankly, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, mm -hmm. what they've done to Ohio State. Uh, the past year or two, right? Two years they've two they've years been, they've been. I mean, there's just no man. there's no reason for me, and I don't like making rankings on past seasons. Yeah, I'm not I'm not into that. And I have watched some of the Michigan games and have been somewhat underwhelmed. Mm -hmm. But I will say McCarthy is the real deal. He can do what he wants, and I just see no reason yet to not have them as my number one team. Yeah, and the good thing is between the good thing is. It's going to be good and bad. Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State are all going to play each other. Right. Um, so it's going to work out in the wash. Yeah. So you have Michigan as your number one team. The team I had, my number one team in the country, you had a number two. Mm -hmm. And so our big mountain power rankings, they're the number one team in the big mountain power rankings, is the Washington Huskies. Mm -hmm. um, they have an elite quarterback who's a Heisman Trophy contender in Penix. Yep. They have an elite offensive line. They have elite wide receivers. Uh, and they have just a very like a good solid defense. Yes, um, they have they have everything going for them. I've been high on them all year. We've picked them multiple times to cover. I, I always go back to the saying, you know, great teams cover. Yeah, and it might sound like just a little betting trope or whatever, but but really it's true. Um, Washington continues to cover. They continue to do, they continue to do everything that they're expected to, and beyond that. Well, I, I was just going to say that. So great teams cover meaning. Great teams exceed expectations. Yes, yes. They're exceeding what that ex expectation. Better way to and, put it. And actually, when you look at, at Michigan thus far, I know they were still my number one. Yeah. They have not exceeded exactly. expectations exactly. yet in terms of betting spreads. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I was very comfortable with Washington as two. I know we're probably uh, one of the few podcasts or whatever you want to call us putting Washington as the number one team yep. uh, out of all, all of these teams. Um, you know, I have them right there with Michigan. Again, I had Michigan as one. I had Washington as two. I actually had Ohio State as, as three. Um, so, uh, you know, when you get to this top four, quite frankly, it, you just stick it in a jar, shake it around, and let it fly out for me. Yep. Uh, I could see any one of these teams beating any one of the other ones on any given Saturday, quite frankly. So I, I think once you get past Oregon at five, those top four to me are just a whole nother step above. I don't see Washington having the issues that I spoke about with the Ducks yep. uh, and the Trojans in yep. terms of those those you know, crap the bed type of games. Yep. I don't see that happening here for Washington. So I do put Washington absolutely in the top four, upper echelon of, of this ranking. Yeah. So so later on this season when Washington is the is the undefeated Pac-12 champion and they're in the playoff, you guys remember, <laughs> Big Mountain had them number one back in September. Um, can you bet that? Yeah, you probably can. I'm sure you can. can. You can yeah. uh, champion, conference champions. And, yeah. and what I'll say here, we kind of talked about this. So our our uh, second, third, and fourth team are going to be playing each other. And number three and number four are going to play each other here in a couple weeks, three mm -hmm. weeks. Mm -hmm. um, Penn State will travel to Ohio State. That'll give us a really good idea about both of those teams. Yes. And both of those teams, I mean, that's whoever wins that game, they're going to have a, a, a legitimate – argument to be that number one team in the country absolutely uh to overall and definitely number one team in our big mountain power rankings. totally so, agree yep that's all i got jy do you have any final thoughts that's it we'll do these every couple weeks and we haven't really decided how often we'll we'll update these but you know certainly don't want to do it every week to me that's overkill we'll take a couple weeks off and put another one of these out here probably early october uh hopefully uh you like what we had to say if you didn't let us know tell us why we're wrong we like to hear from our viewers um, and if you like what we're doing, give us a subscribe, put on some notifications. We're going to drop our week five picks here very, very soon. Yep. And as Steve said earlier on, we've got expansion videos coming out. We're trying to get a video out, if not every day, maybe every other day right now. Um, so, hey, it, it's been fun. we got a lot of season left. And, um, yeah, that's it for now. So thanks a lot for viewing us, and we'll see you next time on The Big Mountain.